I Year 9. This week we are going to do some lessons on unseen poetry, which can be a little bit scary, but we're going to work through that. Uh, your do now task is to read the poem. Um, I will have put the poem on to show my homework. If you can't get access to that, then it is later on in this video. So pause this video, and read today's poem, say something, uh, and then come back when you've done it. Okay, good. Welcome back. So, having listened to it or read it through, what do you think the poet's feelings are about his loved one? How does he feel? Pause and write your answer to that question now. Okay, so we're looking at unseen poetry so that you know what you need to do in the unseen poetry section of your GCSE. Um, so, to do that, you need to understand the overall structure of your English literature exam. So there are two papers. Paper one, you have an essay on Macbeth, which takes you about 45 minutes, and a question on A Christmas Carol, also about 45 minutes. For both of those, you get given an extract, so a couple of paragraphs from the story to write about, but you need to make links between the bit that they give you and your other knowledge of the rest of the book. OK, paper two is the biggest exam you'll be doing. Uh, so it takes a longer time. So you get, first of all, a question on an inspector calls, which takes about 45 minutes. You then get to write about two poems that you have studied before. OK, so they will give you one poem and you have to make comparisons between that and another one. But this, the second poem is from memory. Again, 45 minutes for that. And then finally, you get an unseen poetry essay, which is where we are now. So we're looking at that one in red, followed by then an unseen poetry comparison. And often students really find it difficult. There's a bit of a mental block for unseen poetry because they think it's too hard. And actually, it's not because they're not looking for you in an exam to be able to write about the same level of detail as you would do for a book you've studied for two years. OK, so it's just being brave and having a go. So that's what we're going to practice this week. So even if you're not confident, if you write something down and, and just just have a go, just keep swimming like Dory, you're going to get some marks for what you write. OK, and, and actually... Everybody's in the same place, aren't they, in an unseen poetry exam, because they won't have seen it before. So it's just about picking out a few words here or there, maybe if you can a technique, and just having a go. Uh, and so it's not as hard as you think. So uh, it says to copy this into your book, but I don't want you to do that because obviously you're not working from your book anyway. But these are some instructions on what you need to do in your exams. You get 24 marks for this unseen poetry essay. It will be a poem that you need to read and read again that you've never seen before. When you've done that, you need to read the question underneath, which gives you a massive clue about what the poem is about. So, for example, if the question says, how does the poet show feelings of heartbreak? Then that gives you a big clue that this poem's about heartbreak. Or if it's how does the poet show uh, a romantic relationship, then again, that gives you that information, doesn't it? So the question is really important to give you a clue. And when you've done that, read the poem again. So before you've written a word, you need to have read this poem three times. OK, don't be frightened. It's about you just having a go, trying to show off a little bit that you're confident um, and, and giving your personal opinion. What do you feel about the poem? OK, so. Uh, this slide here breaks down into uh, a bit more technical detail. OK, so AO in exams stand for assessment objectives and they're a list of things that the exam board want you to show. So AO1, can you give a personal response to the ideas in the poem? OK, so just saying, I think this, I think that. AO2, can you analyse the writer's methods, OK, and what the reader feels about that? So the first bit's dead easy. The second bit's where it gets a bit harder, OK? Um, so, you know, that's OK. Even if you can just tick off AO1, then that's fine. So on the right-hand side of the board here, you've got the, the poem, Say Something, and you've got those words there. You might recognise it because it's also a song. Students say all of the time to us as English teachers, I hate poetry, I hate poetry. And actually, you don't, because all of you listen to songs, all of you listen to music, all of you listen to rap, maybe. And that's just poetry. It's just using words. OK, so... There are some questions here in the clouds then. So we're going to have a go at AO1, you reading it and having a go at giving a personal response. So by answering the questions in these clouds, you're going to be giving your personal response. So what do you think the poem is about? 
What kind of tone do you think he has? Tone is something we used when we write about poetry or about um, letters can have a tone too. Uh, all it means really is what kind of emotion do you think is in it? Is it a happy poem, a sad poem? Is the writer angry or upset? Or are they smiley and in love? So it's just about what kind of emotion do you think there is in that poem? And then the third one, what do you think the poet suggests about the relationship between the person whose voice is speaking and the person they're talking about? OK, so are they in a family together? Are they like, you know, mum and son? Are they romantically related? Are they um, just friends? You know, so what relationship do you think it is? So what I want you to do is read through the poem again, bearing those questions in mind and then have a go at answering them in your in your uh, work. And I would aim to do about about six to eight lines here where you answer each of those questions in full. So pause the video. Do that now, please. Okay, so a bit of a recap here about language devices. So in the clouds on the, on the screen are particular language devices, okay, or writing features sometimes they're called. And they're just things that we can name that writers use when they're writing. Um, you should, at this stage in your English career, so, you know, you started at year one, didn't you, studying English, um, and I know that while you were still at primary school, you'd have talked about similes and metaphors, alliteration, things like that would be there. And then, of course, you've built on that during secondary school. So by this stage that you're at in year nine, you should know almost all of these. The ones I think you might struggle with are assonance and oxymoron. OK, but maybe it's worth having a go. Maybe you want to Google it and find it out. So what I want you to do for these is write. So you'd write in your book simile and then explain what a simile is. And you can also have a go at using one too. OK, and it does say at the bottom, these are colour coded. So the uh, the green ones are easiest, orange is slightly harder and the blue are the hardest. OK, which is why you might not have heard of some of those. So you need to write down each of the language features, explain what you think it means, so give a definition of it, and if you can, give an example of you using it. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, amazing. How did you do? So on the board here, you've got definitions for each of those words. That you can match up and uh, mark your own or develop your own if you've missed something. And it's important that we know what as many of these things mean as we can, because it's what you need to be writing about when you write about um, language. OK, so it's, it's just making sure that we're fully comfortable with all of these terms. Um, I want to just talk about assonance for a minute. So it says on the board that assonance means the alliteration of vowel sounds. That, I mean, that, yeah, that's correct, but I think we could come up with a clearer explanation. So you might know, you should know that vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And usually speaking, when we talk about assonance, those sounds are in the middle of a word. OK, assonance is when those vowel that sounds sound really long and stretchy. So, for example, in the word brown, you can hear that ow, can't you? Brown. OK, and cow. So the long brown cow has those sort of stretches in the middle. Obviously, I'm exaggerating that to help you hear it. But actually, long brown cow, they're quite longer vowels, aren't they? That's assonance, and it serves to slow the pace of a poem or a piece of writing down, to draw attention to a particular phrase by making it stand out. OK, so next I want you to read through the poem again. And can you find any of these? OK, so annotating poems is a real skill, too. So if you are able, you can print this slide off or find a copy of this on the Internet. Um, uh, or I'll post one as well and to show my homework for you um, and you can have a go at annotating it. So that's up to you to see how you can do it. But it's it's a skill that we'll build on a lot. We're going to start poetry when you're back in the academy uh, next week. So we're going to work on your um, annotation skills anyway. So for now, if you can print it off, do and have a good writing on it. If you can't, don't worry about it. But you're looking for examples of all of these things. So pause the video and have a go at that now. OK, so let's have, look how you did by giving you an example of an annotated poem. OK, so here you can see that certain phrases have been highlighted and then linked to comments at the side. So your final task today is to read through this sheet and notice what each of these terms are that link to these particular um, phrases from the poem. 
Okay, so we're going to be building on these skills over the rest of this week. And then when you're back in the academy, looking at uh, the other types of poems. So we're doing Unseen this week, but next week we're doing ones that you need to really, really know really well. But we're still going to be using those same language features in all of those lessons. So it really matters that you try and build up a good working knowledge of what they mean and how to spot them. OK, so read through this slide really, really carefully and then you are done for today. Take care. Talk soon.